As always, I like to start with punishment. It's one of the core fundamentals of Tekken, blocking and punishing. If your opponent makes a mistake, you need to capitalize on that mistake. Otherwise, they'll get away with it, and risk versus reward means nothing if there's no risk. You have to learn how to punish mistakes. You don't need to know all the frame data in the game, but you do need to know what's punishable, and especially what is launch punishable. You know those two things about your opponent, you're good. But here, I'll present you with all the options she has, just so you have all the information you need. And as you get more comfortable, you can learn more details and more specific usages of things beyond just what's necessary. So starting off at 10 frames, she has 1, 2, 2. This is excellent right off the bat. We get 25 damage, but 1, 2, 2, when it makes contact, automatically leaves Lydia in her cat foot stance. This was called cat foot 2. You're going to have a hard time getting used to the names of stances, so buckle up. You're going to have to get there eventually. 1, 2, 2 on contact. You can see her hands are about waist high. That automatically transitions her into stance, and you can also see it's plus 8. So having this right away gives her an unbeatable mix-up opportunity directly off the punish. If you do 1, 2, 2, and then press 1 plus 2, they cannot beat that out. They would get counter hit for a launcher if they tried to do that. So this is already a fantastic 10-frame Punisher with options built in after her. You couldn't ask for much better than that. The only issue, I guess, would be the short range of your jab in some situations. 2-4 uh, is also 10 frames and definitely has better range than her one jab. Pretty good frame advantage on hit and all that. So if you're worried about missing, 2-4 is a little bit better, but 1-2-2 two, two is really excellent as a 10-frame Punisher. She has an 11 frame in the form of back 1-2, which is pretty good. Nice advantage and forces them on crouch. That's usually a pretty good situation. But for the most part, I think your, your 10 frame into a stance mix-up is a little more powerful. The damage is, is nice, but I think you get so much out of these stances that's worth a priority. But at 11 frames, she can do this to you just to keep it different. 12 frames is forward 2-4. This is a knockdown. A little bit difficult to do. You kind of have to do this fast. I find myself not getting the input sometimes, just doing it casually. You have to press forward 2-4 pretty quickly. But it's a knockdown, it's a wall splat, and it's 12 frames. Those Almost every character starts to have these these days, so it's pretty important that you get yours. When you're near that wall, you need to be able to start throwing that punish out to get the wall splats. Uh, 13 is trivial. It's not worth even mentioning these strings as 13 frame punishers. They're just... Their point is compared to getting a knockdown with this move. Just do this move, and don't worry about 13. However, at 14, we now have this. Forward, one plus two, three, two, one. This whole string is a natural combo, and at 14 frames, gets you the knockdown, but doesn't wall splat, doesn't break walls. This is just the extra damage. You get someone's exactly 14, this is a pretty good way to do it. But as we said, if you're near the wall, you definitely want to do forward two, four, and get your wall splats. So that's at 14 for pure damage out in the open. Pretty good option to get 41 damage from that little thing. That works well. Uh, at 15, she has a hop kick. It's a little bit of a different hop kick. You notice it's two hits. And unlike a character, say Julia, one of her hits is in the air. You can see where it says 70% damage scaling on the left. One of those hits is airborne, so it already affects the potential combo you can do. And this automatically leaves her in the stance. You'll notice she's also in cat foot too when this connects. You can't do anything about that. So you have to use that in your combos and learn something different. So it is a 15 frame launcher, but it leads to some of her weaker combos, let's say. It's totally fine. She still gets good damage, but it's kind of like a hop kick that's sort of hindered in a way instead of just being a regular hop kick. But I don't mind it. It's a little bit different in its usage. It's something rather than just getting 95 damage. She still gets good damage and just makes you think about it a little bit different. I kind of like the way this character is built in some of those terms. There's some things that are just a little bit different in execution that makes you, you know, approach it differently. I like that. 17 frames is 3-2. This is a natural combo that causes a launcher, but if you can time it just correctly as the foot hits their face, there is a just frame version of this. You see it's doing 24 damage normally, but you get the blue spark version, you get 26 damage. Doesn't affect anything else, hitboxes or stun or anything, it's just two damage for free. So once you learn how to time that, you get two extra damage, and this is your huge combo. So 24 to 26 damage from your launcher, which does lead to your biggest potential combo, is pretty nice. She can rack up damage with this. And it's 17 train, so it can punish some things on block, but this is mostly for getting like a clean sidestep and hitting them with that as a whiff punish rather than a block punish. But it can happen, right? There's plenty of things that are 17 on block 
Just be aware of them. Don't get this confused with something that's exactly 15. So on to crouch blocking, she has while standing for two, which is a little bit better. She gets nice damage, plus eight frames, excellent stuff. So it's a while standing four and then some. 12 frames, she has full crouch down forward two. Look how fast this elbow is. This elbow is just out of nowhere. The knockdown, the wall splat, everything. Just lightning fast mid option there. Uh, does a little bit more damage too, so if you know you got a 12, most lows are going to be 12. There are very few, like, just 11s in the game for the most part. Good lows are going to be 12. That works really well. Even better lows that are 13. This move at 13, while standing 1, 4, is even more damage, and you still get your knockdown, wall splat, and all that. So this is a better option, but it requires a 13. So if you know exactly which one every low is, you know, some characters might have both. Kazumi, I think, her down back 3 and down back 4. One of them is minus 12, one of them is minus 13. If you can remember that and do it appropriately, go for it. Otherwise, you can kind of just stick to that 12. That 12 is pretty damn good when you block any low. That's going to get you a nice reward. Uh, while standing 1-4 is a knockdown of 13 frames, or you can do while standing 1-2. Leave them standing, get nice damage, and leave them standing right in front of you for another setup. That's also a good option, too. 14 frames, not to be outdone. We have while standing 3-2. Now we're up to 38 damage, and guess what? This is also a wall bounce. 14 frames, bounces off the wall for a partial combo. So that is already massive. If you're anywhere near the wall, a 14 frame launcher that does 38 damage on its own is just massive. That's really good stuff. So excellent Punisher at 14 with a partial combo potential. And then at 15, she has a wall standing too, like everyone else. It's not the best combo off of this either, but it's a punish at 15, so you can't knock it. She can also do her hop kick out of full crouch since it is an up input. That works too for 15 frames. As far as whiff punishing goes, when you don't block attacks and you avoid them cleanly, forward 2 4 needs to be ready to come out at a moment's notice. Anytime you see a little flinch, you sidestep in the middle of the string, and you pop them with that. Otherwise, if you get a nice, clean, easy whiff, it's 3 2 that you want to have, and you want to learn that just frame timing. You want to be able to just see what they're doing, make a clean sidestep, and react to it with that, and get your blue spark launcher. 3-2 is your ideal whiff punish, but again, at 17, you might not have the chance. So that's why forward 2-4 is there for those clutch situations. Uh, if you're farther away from them, forward forward 3 has excellent range. I mean, if the odds of them missing something out here and you just getting a punish like that, eh, it, it happens, but it's mostly just people like dancing around and trying to bait you to come in or whatever. That can cover that distance very quickly. Catch them off guard. Uh, otherwise, forward forward one plus two is really good for this situation. If they, you know, they're coming at you and they just happen to miss, bang, one of those catches them really quick. Forward forward one plus two is really good for that. Also, forward forward two does pretty much the same thing. It's just she hits you with one punch and you get your stance out of this. Whenever this makes contact, you automatically go into cat flip stance one. So think about this as a damage for knockdown, forward forward both punches, or forward forward right punch, for a little bit less damage, but you get a stance with a guaranteed mix-up afterward. Both are good options when somebody misses out at those, like, mid-ranges. Punish them with that, and go from there.